Hello, it's Mark for Ableton Daily, and I have a surprise for you guys today. I have designed a Doppler shift inside the sampler instrument inside Ableton Live. And I'm going to give the preset to you absolutely free. Go to my website right now. I'm still working on my website, but you can find the file there. I just posted the file, and you can download it. And you can insert any sound into Sampler, and you can apply the Doppler shift to that sound. How cool is that? And I'll just show you exactly how everything works, why I turned on, why I used what I used to achieve the effect, okay? Any sound effect you, you want, you can use, but I will show you what this sounds like. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> and it always cracks me up every time I listen to that because the original sound source is totally different. Probably barely hear it, but... But you can use any sound you want. Now, when I created the sound to begin with, I started with a very basic sound, and I will show you the sound that I used. It's just a sample of uh, some notes from the operator instrument. I'll go ahead and drag this into sampler. Okay, here we go. And all this is, is basically a synthesizer just a constant note being held down with no effect. I'll turn off all the parameters here so you can hear what the sound sounds like completely dry. And that's it. That's all it is. And so we could use any other sound we want. Just as a last example here, uh, let me find something else here. Single horn. I'll go ahead and drag that into Sampler. And you can see when you drag sounds into it, it doesn't change the settings. All the, uh, all the parameters are the same. And I've just turned these off just a minute ago, but I'll go ahead and turn these back on. Okay, and let's go ahead and hear all this sounds. Really fast. Let me go ahead and increase the timing. Global envelope. I'll go ahead and boost it up 70%. And let's try that again. <laughs> okay, cool. And so you can move the you can move the start sample start and sample endpoints around. So you can get other interesting sounds or you can loop segments of a sample. And what I'm going to do here is go through all the different parameters inside this sampler preset here and show you exactly what I used, why I did it, and so I, you know, how I created the sound originally. So I'll go ahead and insert just a basic sound here. We'll go back to our synthesizer sound. The very first thing that I did is I tried to imagine the Doppler shift taking place. I just like to start really basic, uh, nothing like a spaceship, but just like a car. If the car's coming towards me and I see it coming down the road and as it gets closer, it gets louder. So I've adjusted this global envelope here. So the attack is, it's a very long attack, is about 2.35 seconds. And you can see that the sound slowly fades in. Okay, and th if I didn't have any attack, if it was a really fast attack, so it would come in instant, and that doesn't sound very realistic to me, so I'll go ahead and put that back. And so that's what that's all about, and this is just like a regular synthesizer where you would have the attack, the decay, and the sustain, and the release, and that's what I've adjusted here. And the sustain took the longest because just to get it just right, at the very beginning of the attack, and as, as it reaches the decay, that would be the point on where, let's say, 
if the car's coming at you, and as soon as it gets right in front of you, that would be the highest point. And so that would be the loudest point. Let me go ahead and change the timing down to zero, just to make this a little bit faster. But here's an example. You hear that? The sound goes up high, and then it just drops off. Okay, that's the very beginning, the very first steps of creating the sound. And so, uh, but after this, I went right over here to the filter and turn the filter on. Because if you have, uh, well, lower frequencies travel further than higher frequencies. So if you have like a big truck that you can see it, it's coming towards you and it's way down the road, well, you might be able to hear the rumble of the truck coming at you. Uh, but you don't really hear any high frequencies. You don't really hear a lot of high frequencies until the truck starts to get closer. And then when it gets really close, when it's really right out in front of you, and then everything, it just totally opens up. And we hear the entire frequency range because it's just right there in front of us. Here's the filter. I've just used the default setting. It's a morph morphable 12 dB filter here. Okay, and that sounds really cool, but the filter is applied throughout the entire timing of the sound. And so what I want to do is create a filter envelope so I can control the animation of when that filter is being used and when the filter opens up to let in more of the higher frequencies. You can see down here at the beginning of the attack of the filter envelope, it's all the way down, meaning that we are using the filter's current setting right here. And then if, as it gets higher, the filter starts to move this way, opening up the sound. Listen. Okay. But instead of me coming in here and using the mouse, I want Sampler to do this automatically. And that's why I've created the filter envelope. And you can see and watch this slope as you hear the sound. Here we go. You see that? It just slopes up. There you go. And it wouldn't be really cool unless we had that sound go from left to right. You know, going from the left speaker to the right speaker, because that would be more realistic, right? So, and for that, I've used modulation. So over here on the modulation tab, and I've created an auxiliary envelope, and I've selected which parameter that I want to be affected by the envelope. And I have two to choose from here. I have A or B. And for... A, I have chose panorama. Well, this means that this is left and right. So that's what I've chose for that. And I've set it to 100%. But if you look very closely here, you can see that this envelope looks very close and matches, has very close similarities to the filter envelope, as well as the global envelope. So the timing of all the envelopes inside the sampler instrument for the Doppler effect must match all the envelopes, or very close to the same anyway. The slopes might be a little bit different. So back over on modulation, I've set this to panorama. So I'm telling sampler that I want it to start at this point, which would be the lowest point, the left speaker. And as soon as it reaches all the way to the top to the starting of the decay, it goes to the right speaker. And the amount of the pan would be set here. So let's say I only wanted it to pan 50% or whatever. I could just put in 50. But I want this to be very dramatic. So I'll just put this all the way up to 100. So let's go and hear the sound. Here we go. You hear that? I'll play it again. Okay, if your speakers are set up correctly, it should go from left to right. And the next one is a low frequency oscillator. I'll go ahead and turn this on. And this is to create like an engine sound where the sound is actually stuttering. It's turning on and off, or it has a little bit of a jitter to it. And this is used all the time in different movies, uh, Star Wars, different things like that. Uh, this is like the key here, right here, folks. I mean, this is, I'm totally giving it away to you, but this is how it's done. We can control the type of modulation we want here. And this is currently set at a triangle wave. And I like the sound of the triangle wave, so I'll go ahead and, now that I've turned this on, you should hear the effect. Here we go. Okay, I'll play this a little higher.
And I can control the amount of how the volume is affected by the waveform. Here we go. Okay, and if I change this type here, it'll sound totally different. Square wave, which is just an on and off type sound. Okay, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel and check out the vocal stuttering effect. I've used the same LFO for that. Uh, but that's how that works. That's to create that uh, modulating, just to make it sound more interesting, just to give it a little bit more character. Uh, let's go over to the pitch because the sound currently it doesn't really have any pitch to it. I've turned this off and so I'll go ahead and turn this back on and you can see that now it's activated and let's go ahead and press the note and see how this sounds. As you're on the street corner and the car passes you, this is the sound. Of course, it probably doesn't have a modulation applied to it but uh, or an LFO, but I'll just go ahead and turn that off and you can hear what this sounds like. And so that's the pitch envelope and I can control and limit the pitch envelope to only as high as 12 semitones if I want to, but I can adjust this and make it higher. I can move this all the way up just for something dramatic. I can change this to uh, 30 semitones plus. And let's go ahead and hear that. You know, sounds all right, but <laughs> it's just a little bit too much for, for me. So I've made this uh, 12. And you can see that the pitch envelope here, the timing of this pitch on how it's applied to the sound must meet the same timing for all the other envelopes inside Sampler, okay? And you can see it does, or very close to anyway. You can see how it starts here, it moves slowly up in pitch, and when it gets to the highest point, such as the car, if we're speaking of a car, if the car is right in front of you, that would, it would be right here at this point, and as the car passes you, it just slopes down in pitch. I've made an increase in pitch for the release. So if you lift your, if you're playing the keyboard, you release your hands off the keyboard, it will increase in pitch. Okay, and to dirty up the sound just a little bit, I've oscillated the sound using a basic oscillator. Now I didn't touch the envelope at all. So the oscillation is just constant. Okay, next I wanna talk about controlling the global timing for all the envelopes inside Sampler. This is really important. It's over on the global tab, and it's right down here, and it says time. And you can control how fast and how slow the timing is. Well, this is very useful. If you're making some sound effects for like, let's say a movie or something like that, and you have a spaceship, you have one spaceship flying over really fast, and then the other one, which is a big mothership, it's flying over real slow, or it seems that way. Okay, that's about average, but if you can see if I decrease the timing of all the envelopes down to a negative 50% or somewhere around there, listen to how fast it is now. And if I go all the way down, super fast. Okay, good for whips and things like that. Of course, probably not the right sound for it, but you get the idea. And so if I increase this, which is my favorite, 70 plus 70%, so that's a positive 70% there. Let's hear how it sounds now. And that's my favorite because it just slowly creeps up on you. So that's the sound, guys, and have fun with it. My name's Mark. This is Ableton Daily. Hey, if you like the tips, please subscribe. Uh, I make videos all the time about music and sound design. I'm passionate about it, and uh, I really dig live. So uh, thanks a lot for hanging in there, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Take care.